If you were up till midnight dissecting all the fan theories and Easter eggs in the latest Taylor Swift masterpiece, join the club. Or you could meet us at midnight. Is it even a TS album if there are no genius references and Easter eggs to go crazy over? So, in this video, we're breaking down all the mind-boggling Easter eggs and references in Midnight's. Let's get started. Number 1. Out of the Woods Fans Rise Up If you're one of those Swifties who are convinced that Taylor is going to drop 1989 TV before a new album, buckle up because this is going to get exciting. Now, if you don't skip question on Midnight's, you might have noticed this one tiny bit see important detail about the song. Question fans were quick to notice that the song starts with two magical words. I remember. Yep, those two words are enough to hit you with nostalgia for the 1989 era out of the woods. In fact, if you listen to questions closely, the start of the song has a striking similarity to track four of 1989. Some fans are also convinced that Taylor might have sampled out of the woods. Sure, artists refer to their old and successful work all the time. But for TS, you know that's nothing short of an Easter egg. Plus, after watching the bejeweled music video, fans are also convinced that Tay will be dropping some more singles from 1989. Missed the Easter egg? Keep watching because it gets more thrilling from here. The wild theory here is that Blondie has already recorded the Out of the Woods Taylor's versions. And even if she doesn't release the song as a single or the album itself, there's a huge possibility that she'll pull it up on the era's tour set list. No matter what happens, this iconic callback to 1989 is perhaps the most nostalgic moment on Midnight's. Number 2. Karma is Real Remember when we were all convinced that Tay is going to release an album titled Karma? Following a little shout out to the word karma in the music video for The Man, our hopes were all time high. Because if there's anything Taylor and Karma vibe on another level, and oh, who wouldn't have liked a reputation 2.0? We all know what happens next. After Lover, we got the gifts of Folklore and Evermore, two extraordinary albums in their own right. Hey, no complaints here. Even then, the Karma Easter egg was too powerful to ignore. Lo and behold, Karma found its own home on Midnight's and is perhaps the most manifested song in the album. Just took a long wait of three years, but it's okay to take that long. Turns out Karma is really a god. As Swifties, we are notorious for overanalyzing everything and anything TS does or says. Okay, it's time to confess that we might be the craziest fandom on the internet, but hey. How many times have we been stunned by the most obvious Easter eggs or references that have left us shooketh? Or when has Blondie made anything easier? Ever. So the next reference at Midnight's is going to blow your mind. Ready for it? Number three, breathe in, breathe through, breathe deep, and breathe out. NYU class of 2022 had a field day when TS got announced as their keynote speaker for the convocation. As we desperately waited for her to give the speech of her lifetime, we also knew that she's going to leave at least one Easter egg for us to lose our minds over. Of course, we couldn't make some connections right there and then, but now everything is as clear as daylight. In one portion of her commencement speech, Taylor advises the NYU grads to breathe in, breathe through, breathe deep, and breathe out. Sounds familiar. Yep, she sings the exact same words in Labyrinth, which is another phenomenon feature on Midnight's. Pretty sure Blondie burst into evil laughter when that idea popped into her head. Now, this one skipped our collection of unexplained chests of Easter eggs, but hey, who could have seen that one coming? Mold a beautiful piece of lyric to ask the students to relax and take a breather? Yep, takes a genius. Number four, Calvin Harris had it coming. You know the old tale, if a man talks bleep, then I owe him nothing, and if he spends my change, then he had it coming. Or perhaps, and I got a boyfriend, he's older than us, he's in the club doing, and I don't know what. And you might have also heard of, but when I walked up to the podium, I think that I forgot to say your name. Okay, okay, you get the gist. Following the high-profile breakup of Taylor and Calvin Harris, the DJ has inspired many of her lyricism in songs, including the banger Getaway Car. Sure, this relationship is pretty old news now, but it seems like Tay might have shaded Calvin in high infidelity as featured on Midnight's. And we have some receipts, Your Honor. The biggest Easter egg on the song is the lyric, Do you really want to know where I was April 29th? Okay, don't fiddle your heads because there's only one significance of April 29th in the TS multiverse of lyricism. This is the day when Calvin Harris released a commercially successful yet highly controversial song, This Is What You Came For. Yep, the same song that TS co-wrote and provided vocals to as her pseudonym Nils Sojberg. Yet the DJ never acknowledged his ex-girlfriend's contribution to the success of the song. To be fair, speculating whether Calvin cheated on her or not could be a stretch, but the song is titled High Infidelity for a reason, but there's another theory that makes a lot of sense. Have you considered that this song could be a follow-up to Getaway Car? We have already established that the Reputation track is about her rebound relationship with Tana Hiddleston in the aftermath of her disruptive breakup with Calvin Harris. And if you're going to get yourself involved in a short-lived rebound situation, a cheating ex-boyfriend might push you to the edge. Plus, T.S. also talks about pursuing relationships that she shouldn't have in the song. So, yep, it's all coming together now. Number 5. The 2190 Days Theory 
If you're obsessed with Glitch, as featured on the 3 a.m. version of the album, you know that it's a perfect song to celebrate the fan fave friends to lover trope. We've heard all about it in Paper Rings, too. But this time around, T.S. is giving you a time frame around her love story with Joe Alwyn. And it is nothing short of genius. In Glitch, Taylor tells us that it has been 2,190 days since her blackout love. Quick math will tell you that 2,190 days add up to six years. Again, nothing to speculate here. She's obviously referring to the duration of her relationship with Joe, but there's much more to add here. Midnight's was released on the 21st of October, so six years ago on the same date, T.S. was going through perhaps the most difficult period of her time. Yep, we're talking about the infamous events of 2016. Depending on your time zone, six years ago on the day of Midnight's release, Taylor had performed her last concert in Austin before disappearing from the scene for ages. She made her comeback through reputation, but October of 2016 was wild for the singer. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West had already released a heavily edited video of the singer, and she was largely getting dubbed as The Snake. Around the same events, T.S. was rumored to spark a new relationship with Joe and was quite successful in keeping it under the radar. The way fans break down Glitch is quite mind-boggling. Sure, you can think of her romance as a glitch in her online bullying, but if you consider that the Kimye incident itself was a distortion in her reputation, didn't see that one coming now, did you? Number 6. Dear John 2.0 would've, could've, should've is a tragic sequel to Dear John, a masterpiece from the Speak Now era that made John Mayer a permanent enemy in the eyes of Swifties. Yep, dating a 19-year-old as a 32-year-old man would do that to you. You won't be surprised to know that nothing has really changed. In the classic ode to I'll get older, but your lovers stay my age, it turns out now a 45-year-old John Mayer is dating 23-year-old Kieran and Shipka. Some things never change. The fact that the news about John Mayer's wild relationship came out around the release of Midnight's is just a whack coincidence. But the message behind would've, could've, should've has become more relevant than ever. The song is a definite call-out of her highly publicized relationship with the much older American singer-slash-guitarist. Just by the lyric, give me back my girlhood, it was mine first, you know that the evening won't end well for John Mayer, right from the get-go. It feels as if Taylor saw it coming, and all the John Mayer references in the album are so brutal. To start off, Dear John 2.0 is the 19th track on the album, if you also include the 3 a.m. edition in the list, which of course is a direct reference to Taylor's age when she was in a very turbulent relationship with Mayer. And the fact that a 32-year-old T.S. is writing that song makes it an even bigger statement. Yep, her boyfriend was also 32 when he had begun to date her 19-year-old self. Honestly, if you're going to call out the moral corruption of the powerful male artists, this is how you do it. Subtle, yet brutal. Number 7. Is Speak Now the next re-recording? Bejeweled music video is a swifty heaven truly. Sparkles, direct references to previous eras. Haim feature, the 1989 dress, and a twisted Cinderella story. It is jam-packed with so many Easter eggs and shoutouts that it deserves a nod of its own. To start off, fans are convinced that the music video has revealed the next order of re-recordings, and this time, it's not a stretch. So, what are we hearing next? Drum rolls, please, because Speak Now TV is going to be in our hands sooner or later. The number three pops up in the video so many times that the Speak Now theory is just not a theory anymore. We see Blondie pressing the button for the third floor on the elevator. There are three dragons in the video, three evil stepsisters, and the clock strikes three. You get the idea, don't you? To top all that, she's also wearing a hairpin with the initials SN on it, which stand for Speak Now. But that's not all. We also see Taylor briefly hopping up to the fifth floor and wearing the famous 1989-era dress. Now, we don't mean to speculate, but if there's anything to confirm here, we're going to hear more singles from 1989. It is also very much possible that after Speak Now TV, Blondie will be blessing us with her biggest pop act soon enough. And it gets better. Just in case you missed this deet, T.S. is also wearing the reputation dress in one of the scenes in the video. Sure, all of this could be in reference to the Eras tour, but the most probable explanation is the order of re-recording. We know what you're thinking. Will we ever get a TV for the debut album? Sadly, we couldn't find any reference to the self-titled album yet. But hey, the Midnight's timeline isn't over, and we know it's going to be epic. After all, that's the real legacy to leave. And that's all for now. Do you think we missed any Easter eggs from the album? Make sure to comment down below. Until then, we'll see you all very soon.